multiple choice question to decide your standing with God could seem like, well, an extreme illustration, but it's really apropos to the point we're trying to make. There are those who would lead you to believe that being in a right relationship with God is nothing more than agreeing with and checking off the right statements of belief. If you agree with the points, say yes in the right places, initial here and here and here, voila, you're a Christian. But that's far from the truth of the gospel. And yet many are deceived by pseudo-gospels such as this. They're openly accepted by the mainstream American Christian culture. How did this happen? How did we stray so far from the true gospel so that false doctrines are accepted as fully Christian? The problem of incorrect teachings coming into the church, well, it's not new. Within the first 100 years after Christ's resurrection, false teachers were already infiltrating the ranks of the redeemed spreading a gospel that contained some of the truths of Christianity, yet those truths were only used to conceal deadly errors that would enslave its followers and take them to hell. The book of Galatians was written as a warning against one such heresy. Paul had presented the true gospel to them, and yet they were now being carried away by false teachers. His warning is stern. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you other than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, 6 through 9. The error was so serious that Paul feared for their very souls. He writes, Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Paul also says, I am afraid for you, lest I have labored in vain. Galatians 3.4 and Galatians 4.11 Galatians needed to be born. It's not that they were openly rejecting Christianity and following after another religion but they were deceived by those who took what was true and twisted it, added to it, and came up with something that seemed very rational, logical, and correct. And so it's gone with errors throughout the history of the gospel. Most contain enough of the truth to make it sound valid, yet in the end, like a beautiful fishing lure that conceals deadly barbs ready to catch their unsuspecting victims. Many so-called gospels of today contain errors that are just as deadly. Many are deceived. They sit in churches probably like the one you sit in. The errors often seem so innocuous that it's easy for a person to think they're not deceived. But that's the very nature of deception causes one to feel that they can rise above error and never fall victim to it. The United States has been a fertile ground for such error to grow, although what we are seeing here today is really the fruit of heresies that began hundreds of years ago in Europe. Of course, we have our own American bred heresies. But through the recent years, men and women have devoted and even given their lives in defense of the true gospel combat these errors, such as Charles Spurgeon, A.W. Tozer, Martin Lloyd-Jones, John MacArthur. All of these men have resounded the same note throughout the years, a return to the true gospel. Here, in this video series, we will explore the roots of the false gospels, such as easy believism, revivalism, and the social gospel. We will then contrast these man-made systems with the true gospel. We don't ask that you take our word for it, however. Match what we say up to the scripture. It will be our guide throughout this series, and it should be yours also. For how do you know what you've heard and believed 
is the true gospel of Jesus Christ. How do you know if what this video series is really saying is the gospel? Well, there's only one way. The truth of Scripture. Rightly seen in its historical and grammatical context. I came from a very conservative evangelical background. I believed that my beliefs were historic and orthodox. I believed every word of the Bible. And yet what I believed was not as old as I thought it was. And I too was deceived. And I find the same is true with many today. They would vehemently argue that what they believed to be the very same gospel that the apostles preached. But when the truth is exposed, what they believe is, well, barely over a century old. It's much like this old church house that we found. Its appearance is very traditional. It looks like something that's really old and enduring, and it is old as we deem old. But compared to some of the cathedrals of Europe that date back to the 10th and 11th centuries, well, it's relatively modern. So I want to ask you, how ancient and authentic is the gospel you believe? We pray that God will use these videos as not just a lesson in history or facts for an argument, but that He'll take His truth and cause it to resonate within your heart and change you in a way that only the gospel can.